You're joking, aren't you? It's the Teesside Chef. Lovely brioche burger buns. Now, when I suggested to the missus that we should have brioche burger buns for tea, she slapped me around the chops and said, don't be daft. They're too heavy and cakey for a burger, but these are lighter and fluffier than next door's teacup Pomeranian. So I'm making them anyway, because these are the dog's doodahs, these. So my secret to making these light and fluffy is using pizza flour. So I'm going to get 400 grams of that in me bowl here. And I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of sea salt to that. And most people put a ton of sugar in these, but I'm just going in with two teaspoons of sugar here because I don't like too much diabetes with me burger. And I'm going to add one pack of dried yeast to that, seven grams. And now because I'm dead paranoid about that salt touching the yeast and killing the yeast, I'm going to separate them dead carefully and give them both a good stir into this flour here before I get my machine and crack on with this dough. It's easy to do, much easier than separating two fighting Jack Russells anyway. But if you don't do this, the results will be the same. Absolute carnage. So now we've prevented Armageddon with our salt and yeast, let's get 250 millilitres of lukewarm milk into this mix. And I'm going to add 100 grams of melted butter to this, mixing slowly all the time. And I'm going to go in with two beaten eggs here, and I've got them in a little jug here, because I love jugs, me. And then once we've got all that in there, we want to mix this up. Make sure it's all well incorporated. And this is a really wet mix leg, so I do recommend using a machine here. And you can add a little bit more flour here if it doesn't look like it's going to come together. But don't panic, it's supposed to be a wet mix, so crack on with it, it'll be alright. So now we've got all our ingredients in here, we can give it a good old mix. And if you haven't got a machine like this and you're skint like me, just get yourself a cheap little hand mixer. The door hook on them will work smashing. And a hand mixer comes in useful for all sorts of stuff. Whisking, kneading, you can curl your hair with it as well. I think. So now that dough's all come together and it's just starting to pull off the sides of the bowl there, I'm going to stop the machine now. And I've just let that sit there for about 15 minutes just to let that dough absorb all the moisture. And once that's done, I'm going to give it a really good mix now. I'm going to mix it with my machine for about 15 minutes, try and force this dough to play the game. And you can see that I'm just on the edge of it being too wet here. But in the end, it's all good because this recipe is bulletproof like Crypto the Superdog. So I'm oiling a separate bowl really generously here. And let's tip our dough into this bowl in preparation for our first rise. And you can see how sticky that dough is, but because we've got plenty of oil in our bowl, it won't stick to anything and we won't have to add any more flour. And let's get all the raggedy bits in with our dough scrape because we don't want to waste any of this, you know. And let's bring this all together now. Nothing too complicated here. Just fold it over and fold it over. And when you flip it over, it should be smooth on the other side. Or smoothish. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we definitely want to cover this door now for its rise. So we'll get some cling film, just plonk it on top of your bowl. Or use a wet towel here or something like that. And we want to leave this now until it's doubled in size. Don't leave it for too long though. One hour should be enough for this. And when you've come back from taking the dog for a walk, it'll be all nice and puffed up like this. And now we can get the cling film off it. And let's tip it onto our surface. And because of all that oil we're using, we don't need any more flour here. So get it on there and give it a body blow and knock all the air out of it. And then bring it together with your hands. Nothing too spectacular here. Just keep folding it under with your hands until you've got a nice smooth top. And that should be near enough. And I'm going to weigh each burger bun here so that as uniform as can be, I'm going to get me scales in, weigh the mix. You'll have between 850 and 900 grams of your mix here. And between 70 and 75 grams per bun will give you a dozen and they'll fit as snug as a bug in a rug on a standard oven tray. So let's get the first one in, bring it together and then put it on our work surface. And then you want to squash it down with your hands. And then pull all the edges out and sort of tuck them on top and pull the edge out and tuck it on top. And then another one and tuck it on top. And then pick it up and just sort of run it through your hands with your thumbs like this. And if you find that it's sticking a little bit, just add a little bit more oil to your hands or to the work surface. And once you've done all that, you can spend a little bit of time tidying it all up, shaping it perfectly, or not, depending on how thorough you are about these things. Nothing wrong with it being all a bit uneven and rustic, is there? All goes in and comes out the same way at the end of the day. And when you're as proud as punch with it, get it on your tray and then do the rest. So while I finish doing these, click on the like for me, if you would, if you like this video, and you can subscribe as well. And I promise that I'll always have lots of tasty food for you every week. And you can say hello in the comments as well. Don't be shy. And this black bean burger goes perfectly with these buns. And that's in the description below. So check that out. And now I've got all that nonsense out the way. I've finished these 12 buns here. So let's have a look at them.
and we want these to rise again now for about half an hour but we don't want them to develop a skin on top so we're going to put some oiled cling film on top laid lightly on top so brush your cling film with some oil and then just pick it up and just gently lay it on top and go around the edges with your fingers to make sure none of the air gets in and brush plenty of oil on here because you don't want this cling film sticking to your buns that'd be a nightmare and put your oven on now preheat it to 220 degrees celsius fan setting and those buns look good now so let's get this cling film off of you and be nice and gentle taking this off and there's just one more thing we have to do now before we get these in the oven and that's to give them an egg wash so get an egg in your bowl and give it a good whisk up and then you want to add a teaspoon of milk to that to loosen it up a little bit and then beat again to incorporate that and now we're ready to brush our buns with our egg wash be gentle and be generous a light hand is the key here you're not painting a wrought iron gate or a door jam or anything like that bit of finesse is needed here it's tough for me like because i've got big massive sausage fingers but i do my best you know just try and take it nice and steady away and you know what i think that's probably near enough so these are ready for the oven now so let's get them in the middle of the oven turn the temperature down to 200 when they go in and after 16 to 18 minutes they should look like this lovely and golden brown and smooth just like a dash on's back so i'm going to take one here and i'm going to show you and i shouldn't really do this because they're still warm but i really want to give you the scoop because these are excellent these and you can see that lovely golden color close up and i'm definitely going to get into trouble with the experts now because i'm going to cut this while it's still warm just to show you the texture inside and to show you how foolproof these are and you can see that lovely light texture there and these are perfect for burgers and that crumb looks nice and even and it's lovely and soft and it springs back nicely and like i said these are still warm do they look cakey to you do they look heavy to you you'd have to be barking mad to think these were no good for burgers and if you want that ultimate brioche burger bun shine that you've probably seen on instagram then just give it a little brush with a bit of oil or melted butter and that's shining like a dog's nose perfect super light brioche burger buns dead tasty and not cakey and i hope you enjoyed cracking them into your face just like i do on a regular basis and i hope to see you a lot again soon when i'll be taking you on another food walkies that will make your little tails wag see you next time my little puppies and puppets Ta-ra.